afternoon, everybody. I'm Jen Gordon, our Humane Education Manager, and with me today is Raina. Raina is an adorable puppy, as you can see, who has a lot to say. Raina is on hold. Um, we are very hopeful that her new family is coming this afternoon, and she will get adopted later today. Uh, but please watch our website for all of our adoptable animals. Uh, we are open for adoptions by appointment only, so please watch our website, and if you see anyone you're interested in, make sure you fill out our online application and call us up to talk to one of our adoption counselors about making an appointment to come in and hopefully meet your new family member. So today I'm going to talk about some basic dog grooming techniques, um, tools that you'll want to have at home, and some summer safety as well. So I'm going to start with uh, tools, and you can see we've got our wonderful helper here, Raina, um, being held by our community educator, Lauren. So some tools, There's these are a wonderful rubber brush. They're good on most dogs, um, not your, um, more your wire hairs, your poodles, uh, your Afghan hounds. These are just going to get stuck and tangled, but almost every other breed of dog, these are really wonderful and helpful. What's nice about them is regardless of the length of the coat they're very gentle hi you're like what are you doing what are you doing um and because they're rubber um, this is the same thing that you'll see this one has a nice handle on it uh, for ease of use uh, you can also use these when you're bathing your dog to help you kind of loosen some of that loose hair and dirt as you're giving them a bath which you can't do with your other brushes so that's one brush you're going to want to have on hand um, just as last week with your cats, you're also going to want to have a flea comb. Hopefully you're not going to have to use it very often, maybe not ever, um, but it is a helpful way to find and actually catch fleas in the tines of the comb or to check to see if your dog's itchy if perhaps fleas are the cause. So you'll want to have that. And then brushes, it really depends on the type of dog you have and their hair color. So you'll see there's a pin brush, We've got a soft brush here. What do you think? What do you think? And then we have a slicker brush, which is great for your coarser haired, wire hair dogs. It, it catches that fur and helps really get down deep. Now she's got, Raina here has a really nice short coat. So assuming it stays that way, and it probably will as she grows, she's gonna be very low maintenance when it comes to grooming. Um, so something like this might actually be too rough on her. Um, she's probably going to be better off with a nice soft brush like this. What do you think? Does that feel good? And again, when you start when they're young, um, they'll be more used to it. They'll know what you're doing. They'll know that it feels good and it's not something to be scary or threatening and they'll enjoy it more. Um, so on her, I would use a brush like this. And if she's shedding a lot and we're outside or maybe if I'm giving her a bath, I might use one of these rubber ones like what do you they're super easy to clean too. They are. They are super easy to clean. Um, and something you want to keep in mind too when you're picking out um, the right dog for your family is you might want to keep in mind how much grooming does that dog need and how much time are you really willing to spend on it. Um, either yourself or in taking your animal to a groomer to have someone else do it for you. Uh, some dogs like Raina here are going to be pretty low maintenance. Um, a dog like a Afghan hound, a poodle, um, a lot of your thicker hair, your huskies, um, your Newfoundlands, they're going to need a lot more grooming and a lot more care. So if that's not something you want to do, you don't want to brush your hair, dog for a couple hours every day, you're probably going to want a nice shorter hair dog like Raina here. So those are some basic tools that I got. Um, a comb like this is nice mainly more for your longer haired dogs, but if nothing else, these can be really good if you have a brush like this or a slicker brush. Having a nice good comb is a great way to clean the fur up, even if you're not actually using the comb on your dog. So that's brushing. Um, when it comes to bathing your dog, most dogs really only need a bath every three months or so. Uh, there are some people who bathe their dogs more frequently, depending on their fur coat. Um, or if they how often? Roll in stuff. Yes, how <laughs> often they roll in things or uh, get into mud puddles, um, or if they have some kind of a skin disorder or disease that needs a little extra care. Um, also, maybe are some people who have uh, dogs they're showing in exhibitions, 
or work in therapy work may need to be groomed more often and have bangs, uh, baths more often. You do want to be careful. Make sure that you're not drying out their skin too much. You want to make sure you're using an appropriate shampoo. Please always check with your vet about what that is. Um, and then when you do bathe them, make sure you're very careful about their eyes and their ears. You don't want to get soap or water in there. And you want to dry them very thoroughly when you're done, especially on cooler days, um, especially a young puppy. They can get very chilled as they're drying off. Right, Raina? Mm -hmm. She said, yes. Okay, so then nails. So last week we talked about cats, and I did mention Quick Stop, which is a styptic powder. Might have a couple different names, but it's always a yellow powder, uh, maybe an off-white, a dark off-white. This will stop bleeding if you cut the nail too short. As I mentioned last week, if you're careful with the translucent nails on a cat and you get pretty good at it, it's pretty difficult to make a mistake because you can see the quick. That isn't always true on dogs. Now, Raina here, let me zoom in on a paw here. She actually has some nice translucent nails. So she would be relatively easy as, as far as being able to see where the pink is and where just it's just white. It's pretty easy to avoid that quick. <laughs> Because if you cut where that pink is, that nail is going to bleed. It's going to hurt. She'll, I mean, she'll be okay, but she's not going to like it. It will hurt, and you will need to work to stop that bleeding with some quick stuff. A lot of dogs will have a very dark, dense nail, so you can't see it. It might be solid black, solid dark brown. Um, so what you're really looking for, and if you can kind of look at hers, hers are pretty short. Hers are too long. But you see where it's bending? Where it starts to bend is where that quick should stop. So when you can't see the quick, you're guessing, doing your best guess based on where it starts to make that full bend. That's where it's gonna be safe to cut. So with a dog, unlike cats, I can almost guarantee you, once in a while, you're gonna cut them too short. It's gonna happen. Um, and even your best vet, your best groomer, it's gonna happen, especially if they've got those solidly um, dense black or dark brown nails. So you want to have that on hand. And what else did I want to make sure I talked about today? Summer safety. So it's starting to get hot out. We want to be very careful with our pets outdoors. If it's hot for us, it's even hotter for them. Remember, they're, they don't sweat like we do and they're wearing a fur coat. So if we're uncomfortable, they're definitely uncomfortable. So you never, ever, ever want to leave your dog in a locked car. Uh, it can get very hot very quickly, and it can be fatal. Uh, when you're taking them out for exercise, you might want to go on shorter walks, um, or don't go, don't go as far, don't go as fast. Um, bear in mind that dogs are not always the best judge of how far they can go. They're often like young children. They're feeling good, and they want to keep going, going, going. But as far as you go, you have to turn around and go just as far from them back. Um, so use your best judgment on that. You might also want to make sure you bring some portable water with you, uh, especially on a hot day. There are... Hi, you honey, want to play You play with honey ball? She says, I'm going to play. There are some um, portable dog bowls. Uh, this is one example. There's different kinds. You can see this folds up pretty small. You could probably shove this in a purse or a pocket. Um, but if you have this and a water bottle on you, you could stop on your walk while you're outside, fill that up, make sure they stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, make sure they have access to shade. If they're outside in the yard or if you're going on a trip with them, make sure they have access to shade and to water and really watch them for signs of heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Um, you want to be very careful, especially with your very young dogs, um, your older dogs, or if you have a dog that happens to uh, be suffering from any long-term illness. Um, diabetes, um, that sort of thing, they're going to be more prone to heat illness and be more sensitive. So you want to be very careful with our pets in the summer. Thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, we are open uh, by appointment for adoption, so please continue to keep watching our website. Uh, Humane Lab Live will continue out throughout the summer. Beginning next week, we will be filming live from camp, so you'll get a few minutes sneak peek of what uh, Lauren and I and our campers are doing at camp this summer. So hope to see you tune in then. Thank you so much. Raina says bye too. Bye.